Hello, thanks very much for watching. Well, this is Kidlington. Now my experience to get here was a little bit frustrating because as I've done in the past, which I really shouldn't do again, I should know my lessons. Coming down the Oxford Canal, I kept saying, oh, I'm sure there's a better mooring spot just around the corner. And I kept doing that again and again and again. And the day got later and later and the, the light started to fade and it got really, really dark. Uh, but very, very luckily, and it was pure out of chance, just around the corner from this next bridge, there was Armco, and I moored up here. Just over the bridge, I was able to park the car, and the Kidlington town is just around the corner. There's a big supermarket, um, and it proved out to be a really good place to moor up. Um, I stayed here for, for the full two weeks, just above the lock here, and I went away for one of the weekends, so I didn't want to moor up on grass like this with pins and I was really eager to to moor up on the Armco where I knew it would be secure with other boats going past but Kidlington um, is just north of the the city of Oxford I left my car at Twyford Bridge and continued to head south. The canal follows the route of the train line, so I knew I could get back to my car once in Kidlington. To the southwest of Kirklington is White Hill Satellite Earth Station. Its large dishes can be seen from the canal, and the station is operated by cable and wireless. Then at Baker's Lock, the canal shares a short course of the River Cherwell down to Shipton Weir Lock. Into the outer suburbs of Kidlington, I moored just north of Kidlington Greenlock. The weather had been rain one minute and sunshine the next, and together with some strong gusts of wind, just south of Lower Hayford, I came across a boat that was adrift so decided to help. Paul, Aid, Vivian and Jim were already trying to salvage what rope this boat had to try and secure it. Originally it had been moored on the offside to a fence, but the ropes had snapped. The narrowboat had limited gunnels and a fragile roof, so tricky to climb aboard and move the boat. So, using Alice, we managed to secure and move the drifting vessel to the towpath side where the bank was closer. You often find when boats come adrift or things float into boats, there is a real community spirit to help out. With the boat safe once again, I continued on my journey south. My narrowboat has metal doors on the side and at the stern. Using the same European oak as my TV cabinet, Carpenter Michael got to work making solid shaker style wooden doors. I wanted the same style as my TV cabinet and my kitchen doors, so there was a uniform look. The top and bottom rails are connected to the sides using mortise and tenon joints. These are strong and have no mechanical parts. The doors have two panels each and the inner panel is around 6mm smaller than the outer edges to allow for expansion. This is one of the side hatch doors with the oak placed inside. In the stern door, instead of the bottom rail being wider than the top, I wanted it the other way around 
This was not only required as there are two air vents in the bottom section of the door, but I wanted a solid larger area to fix a door lock at the top of the door. I oiled all the doors on all edges with this Osmo top oil. It has a clear satin finish and I've given the doors around four coats with a light sand between each coat. The doors were then stuck into place using a flexible marine glue. At Baker's Lock I was rather impressed with this electronic water level board. Although the level was rising, as long as I was careful I could pass. At bridge 219 I really struggled to keep the lift bridge up. In the end I had to use chains to connect it to the floor so I could pass. Of course this bridge had no offside mooring so I had to climb across the weeds and the roof to navigate on my own. At Thrupp there is another lift bridge. The good part is this bridge is electronically opened, but the bad part is you have to make a tight 90 degree turn through it. With people watching and random gusts of wind, I gave it a go. To my utter surprise I swung Alice around in one go and through the narrow gap without touching the sides. I must say hi to the couple at the stern of the first blue boat on the right. Moored up near Sparrow Gap Bridge they were viewers and were really surprised to see me. Oh, and they were also trying out a new birthday present of mooring chains. It was at this point I was eager to moor up myself, but all the spots were full for hours on end. Until next time, see you later.